Hi guys, so in this video, I will be teaching you on how to solve for the maxima and minima using the second derivative test. So in this problem, we have y equals, you have x raised to 4 plus 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 4. So the first step is to find your y prime. So y prime equals, so you have power formula, so this is 4x cubed plus you have 2 times you have here 3 x squared minus 3 times you have here 2 x minus you have here 4 so plus 0 the second step guys is to equate your y prime to 0 so if y prime is 0 you have 0 equals so 4 x cubed plus you have here 6 x squared minus 6x minus 4. Now, by equating your y prime to 0, you can get the critical points here. So, let's solve for x. So, 2 is a common factor, so you can divide both sides by 2. So, you have 0 equals, so dividing both sides by 2, you have 2x cubed plus, you have your 3x squared minus, 3x minus 2. So we divided both sides by 2. Now, you can factor this out using your synthetic division or you can use your calculator here. So you have mode, you have here equation, so 5. Then, this third degree, we have here 4. Then you input those coefficients, so you have here 2 equal so you have here 3 you have here negative 3 then you have here negative 2 then you just press equals so you have x is negative 2 you have x is so this is third degree it means that you have three values for x you have one and you have x equals negative 1 half. So this is the critical points. Now, using the second derivative test, we can decide or we can find out whether which of these points are maximum and minimum. So we just plot these points in our curve. So here, at negative 2, what is y? So you just substitute the value for x in your original function so we just input here the function so that is so alpha x raised to 4 so plus 2 alpha x squared uh, cube minus 3 alpha x squared minus 4 alpha x plus 4 then you press calc here calc then you input the value for x is negative 2 you have negative 2 so for x is negative 2, you have y as 0. So here. So this is negative 2, 0. So at x is 1, just press calc and 1. You have y as 0. So this is. 1 0 so at x is negative 1 half we just press calc again and negative 1 half we have 81 over 16 so somewhere here so this is negative 1 half 81 over 16 so, using the second derivative test, we can find out whether which of these points are maximum and minimum. So, you have this y prime is equal to, you have 4x cubed plus 6x squared minus, you have here 6x minus 4. So, y double prime. So we just get the second derivative of the function. So this is 4 times, so this is 3x squared 
plus you have 2 times 6 that is 12 x minus 6 so y double prime that is equal to you have 12 x squared plus 12 x minus 6 now so after getting the second derivative you just substitute the values for your critical points we have here negative 2 negative 1 half you have here 1 you have here at x is negative 2 so at x is negative 2 so y double prime is so 12 times negative 2 squared plus 12 times negative 2 minus 6 so that is equal to so that is equal to 18 so it means that at negative 2 if y double prime is actually greater than 0 or it is a positive it means that the graph at that point is concave upward so that is our idea of our second derivative test if your y double prime is greater than 0 or a positive it means that it is concave upward so if it is concave upward you have here a minimum so using this figure so the mnemonics is if you're positive of course you're happy so you have a happy face that is a smiling face if your y double prime is actually less than zero or it is a negative it means that your graph is concaving downward so that is negative so if you are negative you have a sad face so that is the mnemonic so you have here a maximum so here at negative 2 it means that it is a minimum because your y double prime is greater than 0 it is positive it is concaving upward so this is a minimum point so let's go back to our graph so this is concaving upward here then say at x is negative one half you have y double prime equals so 12 times negative one half squared plus 12 times negative one half minus six so y double prime equals You have here negative 9. Therefore, your y double prime is actually negative or less than 0. It means that it is concaving downward. So if it's a concaving downward, this is a maximum based on this figure. So therefore, this is a concave downward. Concaving downward here. Then at x is 1, you have here at x is 1. So y double prime, that is equal to 12 times you have 1 squared plus 12 times 1 minus 6. So you have here 18. It means that your y double prime at x is 1 is a positive. Therefore, if it's positive, you have concave upward if it is concaving upward it is a minimum so at point x1 that is a minimum we have here concaving upward so this is our graph here so basically we have two minimum and one maximum point so so based on that procedure guys, we can conclude that your second derivative actually tells the concavity. So the second derivative actually tells the concavity of your curve. So if your second derivative is positive, it's concave upward. If it's concave upward, it has a minimum. If it's negative, it means that it's concaving downward it means that it has a maximum point so your graph here so when we talk about the second derivative we are dealing with here 
the inflection point or point of inflection. So the point of inflection is a point where in your second derivative is zero. Why? Because it is actually a part of your curve and we were in your increasing and suddenly you are going to decrease. So your slope is increasing and at this point, this is our point of inflection here. Increasing then decreasing. So our point of inflection is a point where in our second derivative is zero. So it has no change of slope. So if your f of prime x is the slope of your curve, f of double prime x is the slope of the slope of your curve. It means that if this is your transition point from increasing slope to decreasing slope, it means that your f of double prime here is zero. It's called the inflection point. So that's it guys. I hope that you have learned from this video. In my next topic, I will be dealing with the application of maxima and minima. I will be solving past board exam problems and I hope to see you there. Thank you guys and God bless you.